Hey guys, and welcome back to another remote nature walk with Maine Fish and Wildlife Class. Last week I spent a day walking around at four different pheasant release sites in York County. I was really hoping to get on video for you guys just what Aldo Leopold's describing in his short story, Red Lanterns, that we read from a Sand County Almanac. Uh, in that story he describes following his English setter through the uplands chasing rough grouse in the fall. And I figured I could walk around and film some of those red lanterns and who knows, maybe come across a rough grouse or a pheasant along the way. And what I experienced was way more than I had planned for and something I'm super, super grateful for. Uh, at the third release site of the morning, I came across a fellow hunter getting ready to head out into the woods with his English setter. And he did the most generous thing. He offered to allow me to come along and film his dog working and experience the hunt with him. Something he absolutely did not need to do and a really, really awesome gesture. So I, I took him up on it and, and walked around and we chatted and uh, followed his dog Milo through the woods and it was a really, really cool experience. I had never seen a bird dog work in person and uh, what you're about to see is just that. Pretty cool stuff and something I'm very thankful to have experienced. Alright, so what we're seeing here is the hunter and Milo working together as we go up the edge of this field. It was so cool all along the way to watch these two work together and think about the parallels with our story, the Red Lanterns from Aldo Leopold. Um, one of the coolest things right off the bat that I noticed here uh, was a parallel with all those words. He writes in Red Lanterns, the first test of a partridge dog is his willingness to do the wet work while you parallel him on the dry bank. And that's exactly what we're about to see here. We were able to walk down the edge of this field and the easy walking while Milo continuously circled back, checked in with us, and then would duck back into the really thick, wet stuff where those pheasants would like to be and work his way up through there using his nose, uh, trying to sniff out a pheasant. And it allowed us to have nice, easy walking while trusting that Milo was doing his job uh, looking for those birds. And that is a, a testament to an experienced dog that knows uh, where those pheasants are likely to be. So as we followed Milo through the uplands here, we found signs of the impending whitetail rut as well. There's all kinds of territorial markings that are beginning to show up on the landscape that bucks are leaving as uh, the, the uh, whitetail rut approaches. So we'll see a few of those here in a minute. Check that out. We've got our first nice scrape of the day. This is a real fresh one made by a buck that came through here. We can see where he pawed the leaves out in the ground and left some fresh earth there. And here's his licking branch up above it. He's used the white pine. And that is a sign that the whitetail rut is on the way. These bucks are doing some territorial marking and other deer in the area will come and rub their faces and their orbital glands on that branch and maybe leave some urine in the uh, open earth there. Um, so really cool sign as we follow Milo through the woods we found a nice buck scrape on the ground. We've got more signs of the impending whitetail rut coming here on this uh, little willow, it looks like, along the edge of this little marshy spot. Nice rub on that tree there where the buck has come and rubbed his antlers to mark his territory. And there goes Milo. Nice looking pheasant habitat, too. In what was the most exciting moment of our walk together through the woods with Milo, uh, he actually went on point and notified us that he had uh, smelled a pheasant. And it got pretty exciting there for a little bit. And as I followed this hunter through the woods and approached Milo on point, all the Leopold's words again were ringing through my mind from that uh, Red Lantern short story we've read. He writes in there, His wet nose screening a hundred cents for that one cent, the potential presence of which gives life and meaning to the whole landscape. He is the prospector of the air, perpetually searching its strata for olfactory gold. Partridge scent is the gold standard that relates his world to mine. My dog, by the way, thinks I have much to learn about partridges, and being a professional naturalist, I agree. He persists in tutoring me with a calm patience of a professor of logic, in the art of drawing deductions from an educated nose. I delight in seeing him deduce a conclusion in the form of a point, from data that are obvious to him, but speculative to my unaided eye. Perhaps he hopes his dull pupil will one day learn to smell. Like other dull pupils, I know when the professor, professor is right, even though I do not know why. I check my gun and walk in. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. There's Milo on point, and uh, we've come up and kind of assessed the situation. We trust him. He's the professor. He's smelled the pheasant, and he's letting us know. And uh, there we go, walking in in hopes of flushing that pheasant. As it turns out, we think the pheasant may have run off on us here uh, in our haste to catch up. 
while Milo uh, stayed steady on point. So we never did catch up with that pheasant, but it was a really, really cool moment to watch that setter on point, letting us know that his nose had made a deduction that there was a pheasant here, and get ready. So really, really cool to see. So after finishing up that awesome walk in the woods with Milo and his owner, I decided to try one more release site on my way home uh, that morning, and I stopped in at one not super far from my house where a lot of habitat work has been done in hopes of uh, not only maybe bringing a pheasant home, but also showing off some of the really uh, awesome work being done by landowners around York County to help create early successional habitat for wildlife that really need it. So what we're seeing here is a sign that's kind of letting people walking down this trail know the kind of habitat work that's being done here. Uh, one of the issues we have here in southern Maine these days is that with a lack of forestry going on on the landscape, we've lost a lot of our early successional habitat, that young forest that supports a really unique host of species. Things like ruffed grouse and woodcock and New England cottontails, our endangered rabbit, as well as all kinds of other songbirds uh, that nest in these early successional habitats. When my dad was a kid in the 1950s, he talks a lot about old farmland that was reverting back to forest. There was all these young trees, quaking aspen and gray birch uh, that we're seeing here. And uh, the landscape was loaded with New England cottontails and rough grouse and woodcock and things like that that were really uh, happy in that kind of habitat. As we've slowed down uh, cutting uh, some of our forests here in southern Maine, what we've noticed is we have a lot of really mature forest around now, which is good for some species, but not such good news for things like rough grouse and New England cottontails and those woodcock that we see on that sign there. So really neat stuff that we have some of this habitat work going on. It's kind of letting people know, you know, it's a little messy right now, but um, there's a purpose to this and we're trying to create habitat for these creatures that need it. So I knew this must be a good area. This early successional forest is likely to hold, you know, pheasants that we're looking for here and also maybe woodcock. So I got out walking around in there and uh, found some great habitat loaded with young quaking aspen, which is a favorite food source of rough grouse and just make some really nice thick heavy cover and in that I found uh, a couple of different songbird nests from this past nesting season signs that this habitat work is is working these nests are in some young red maples that are stump sprouting and creating some really thick growth you can imagine when the leaves are on there how heavy the cover would be in there and how safe um, those early successional species would feel moving around in there so finding those songbird nests was really cool a little bit further along I did flush a woodcock which was really cool, came right out from under my feet and gave me a pretty good scare, uh, but was awesome to see. And again, a testament to this habitat work actually doing its thing and creating some awesome habitat for creatures that really, really need it. Uh, amongst that walk, I found red lanterns, just like all the Leopold describes, those blackberry bushes glowing red in the autumn sun. And I knew I must be on the right track. And sure enough, it wasn't long uh, before I kicked up a hen pheasant uh, and was super, super excited and grateful to have a pheasant in hand after a long walk in the woods that day and four different release sites visited. Um, that the, the pheasant you're looking at there is a hen. It's a female, uh, and it provides an awesome opportunity to take a look at a vocabulary term we're talking about in Unit 2 right now. This is a great example of sexual dimorphism. Pheasants um, display this trait, and that females are very brown and drab, and the males... Uh, or the roosters are uh, completely different looking. Remember, sexual dimorphism is this idea that males and females of the same species look distinctly different. And we certainly see that with ring-necked pheasants. Uh, the thought here being hens, which are going to do all the parental care and are going to have to sit on ground nests, must be camouflage and evolution has led to that. Uh, while the males, who are selected by the females, are likely selected for their colors and the length of the, their tail feathers there, which are all secondary sexual characteristics. You can also see the spurs on that male pheasant's legs, another secondary sexual characteristic. So a uh, classic example of sexual dimorphism on display here. The hen I got uh, is uh, much more drab in color, and the rooster uh, that you're seeing here is um, you know, much more colorful. That's a secondary sexual characteristic, along with the spurs on its legs and the length of its tail, all traits that help to uh, fight for and attract a mate. Uh, meaning we're looking at secondary sexual characteristics there. Pretty cool stuff. So lucky enough to bring a pheasant home and uh, have it in the frying pan that night for dinner. And it was really neat to share with my family. And just an awesome day of field uh, in the Maine woods. I'm especially thankful for that experience afforded to me by 
such a gracious hunter to follow Milo through the woods and get to experience him doing his thing for the morning. Really awesome to see uh, Aldo Leopold's short story, The Red Lanterns, uh, in action in person. So really cool experience today, fun time in the woods. I look forward to seeing you guys in class next time and appreciate you tuning in.